Hey guys, Red Chopsticks here. Well, it's that time again. It's time for Halloween. Yes, once again, we are ready to show the world our dark side as we show the love we have for the thing that scares us. And candy. But mostly what scares us. And while I could make an entire list about monsters in video games, I'd rather talk about psychos. It's no secret that we enjoy monsters, but when it comes to the crazy, disordered minds of people, we are more interested in that. We fear the cycles, and at the same time, we show our love for them. Today, we're going to show you the top 10 craziest cycles in video games. And yeah, it would be crazy to add rules, but we're going to anyway. First off, one cycle per franchise. There are a ton of crazy people in video games, and when they all come from the same franchise, we can only pick one. Second, they must come from video games only. I'm not putting any cycles that came from movies, comic books, or any other forms of media first. So characters like Jigsaw from the Saw franchise won't be on this list just because he has a video game, he came from a movie first. And in case you haven't figured it out by now, this also means there will be no Joker. <laughs> yes, I know, the Joker is perhaps the best psycho in the whole world, the craziest of them. But he came from comic books first, and he's more of an icon of crazy. You expect him to be crazy no matter where he comes from. And this one's only about video game characters, an original character. And I should also mention this rule can be twisted a little if the character is an original design. And finally, keep in mind this is all opinion based. You might have a different view of a psycho that I don't have, but remember, it's all opinion. But it'd be crazy to go against my opinion, so let's get started. Grab a straitjacket and find a padded cell, these are the top 10 video game psychos. Am I a psycho? The Medic from Team Fortress 2. Team Fortress 2 has quite a group of soldiers to fight with, and they all have interesting personalities, ranging from normal and simple to odd and mysterious. But out of all of them, the Medic is the craziest for several reasons. Raised in Germany during a interesting time, let's go with that, he seemed to favor experimenting on human life, even going so far as to lose his medical license because of those experiments. When the patient woke up, his skeleton was missing, and the doctor was never heard from again! <laughs> anyway, that's how I lost my medical license. <laughs> he doesn't seem to care about human life, as long as it doesn't affect his experiments. And you can never tell from him at times. You can have a conversation with him, but it's so hard to tell of how serious he is when he does something dark. He's kind of a mixture from Jade from Tales of the Abyss with Dr. Frankenstein. Completely insane ideas, but you can never tell if he's serious or not. Makes me wonder who's more insane, him or the guy who made him a medic. <laughs> oh, that looks good. No one straws from Dead Space 2. This one I had to admit I was kind of wondering who was more insane. Strauss or Isaac. It all came down to who couldn't fight the marker the most, and Strauss won by a mile. When you first meet him, Strauss is like you, desperate to destroy the marker and to get out alive. You know very little about him except that he killed his wife and son. And yeah, that is a little crazy, but he is trying to help you. As you play the game, Strauss does try to help and explain how to destroy the marker, but he slowly loses his mind seeing his dead son. Oh, look at you. I up so much. The more he stays with you, the more his mind is going away until... I just need you to see what I see, Ellie. I promise it won't hurt! Just put down the screwdriver! Strauss, no! no! What's interesting about Strauss is that we know very little about him. We know what he did, but we don't know how he got to the point where he was infected with the Marco and... But you get that off screen right now! We'll save that for a different episode, but for now, next number. The Origami Killer from Heavy Rain In Heavy Rain, your main villain is the Origami Killer, a psycho who captures boys and leaves his calling card of an origami figure in their hands. And while this is all going on, he's testing the fathers of the boys through trials. You'll get this feeling you've seen this before, and yeah, it's a jigsaw to a point. But the difference is, is that the Origami Killer wants to know how far the father's love will go for their sons. 
Are you ready to show your courage in order to save your son? The killer watches the fathers go through five trials, testing the pain and the love they have for their sons, and gives awards on the whereabouts of the sons who each trial pass. A reward is in the glove compartment. <clears throat> Origami killer will not stop. He will constantly kidnap kids until he finds the one father that will go all the way and will never stop until he finds that one. Now I won't spoil who the Origami killer is in case you haven't played the game before, in which case you should, now. But when you do see who the killer is, you'll quite understand why he's doing this, but it still means he's crazy. Also, you might have a fear of folded paper in art form. So, sorry. The St. John's Family from The Walking Dead video game. Warning, if you haven't played The Walking Dead video game yet, you should. No, seriously, you should play it now. It's a great game, and this might have a few spoilers in it. Still with me? Okay, let's begin. So The Walking Dead takes place during a zombie outbreak, and like many forms of zombie games and movies, it's not the zombies you have to fear, it's the people. In the game, you'll meet several people that can't stand the new changes in life and snap, and none more than the St. John's family. After several months of the outbreak, you and your group are starved when you meet Andrew and Danny, who are looking for gas and offers you protection within the farm. You'll also meet Brenda, the mother of the brothers, and they seem friendly enough. But within this farm, you find something dark and sinister about it, and the more you learn about the brothers, the creepier they get. It isn't until dinner when you find out what's wrong with them, and let's just say... Well... You gotta tell them! Silent Breed is people! Yep, they cut people up to eat them. And they think they're normal! And of course, being in a zombie world, they do get what's coming to them. But my only problem with this is that if you've seen enough zombie games or seen zombie movies, like me, you should have seen a few alarms set off as soon as you set foot in the farm. Yeah, it's not a list about video game psychos without Psychomantis, perhaps the very first psycho we've ever met. Born in a small Russian village before the collapse of the Soviet Union, his mother would die giving birth to him, which would make his father resent him and even hate him. He would later on discover that he has the powers to read mind, and with these powers, he would burn down his village. Mantis would then move to the United States and begin work with the FBI. He would enter the minds of suspect killers and uncover the truth of their crimes. However, during one interrogation, the Mantis goes too far into one mind of a serial killer, and subsequently adopted the personality of him, becoming psychotic and later on hating humanity for its selfish needs. Psycho Mantis is completely insane, and with his powers to read mind, he always has the upper hand. He knows where you're going to fire, messes with your mind, and actually reads your memory card, going so far as to push his insanity towards you. And if that wasn't enough, beating him was insane enough as well. I mean, come on, who would come up with something like that? That's crazy. Slappy from Dead Rising 2 and Off the Record. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking, Hey Chopsticks, how can you even put Adam on the list? He's a crazy psycho clown with dual wielding chainsaws! Well, there are a couple reasons. First of all, I never thought that he was that crazy. Don't get me wrong, he's a killer clown and that scares me enough, but there really wasn't much to say about him. His reason for breaking sanity does kind of make a little sense, and his way, it almost works. Almost. Also, I think the only reason we remember him for the most is because of his death. Warning, if you're not a big fan of blood and guts, I advise you to skip the next 30 seconds. Still with me? Okay, I warned you. <laughs> Jesus. Like I said, Adam the Clown is creepy, but Slappy? Everyone knows Slappy! Oh dear god, mommy help me. Slappy is a teenager that just started to date, but due to the zombie outbreak, those plans have been put on hold. Filled with pure rage, he goes after Chuck and swears that he'll never get a date again. And while there was a bit of psycho here and there, it wasn't until the spin-off off the record that Slappy's mind went to a much darker place. In the game, Slappy actually believed that he and his girlfriend are toys and that Frank is some sort of god that can fix him. Due to the pressure of a zombie outbreak, his mind had no choice but to split in two, making him believe that he is the character of Slappy rather than himself. Not only that, but the guy was insane enough to come up with flamethrower water guns. That is awesome. 
and crazy. Alfred from Resident Evil Code Veronica X Born from a set of twins due to an experiment, he and his sister Luxia both grew up in the manor where he grew to look up at his sister and hate the world. At the tender age of 10, he discovers what his father had done, helps abduct him and injects him with the virus mutating him. His sister would later on discover that there was a way to control the virus, but in order to do that, she must be placed in cryostasis for 15 years. Without his sister, his loneliness causes him to be mentally unstable and psychotic. Along with this, his mind would finally shatter into dual personalities, himself and a version of his sister. This personality is so strong that sometimes it would take over his body to a point where he talks in her voice and dresses up like her. Alfred is unstable, he's violent, and quick to judge and blame others. He enjoys causing pain to others, but as long as it doesn't affect his sister or his mind, he could care less. Ready? Let the game begin! GLaDOS from Portal GLaDOS, or Genetically Lifeform and Disk Operating System, is an artificial intelligence in the game Portal. Responsible for testing and maintenance for the research facility, GLaDOS seems to be nothing more than a voice and a guide to the player. But it slowly becomes clear that GLaDOS is... a bit crazy. When you first meet GLaDOS, she seems more like a helpful computer, but as you slowly get to know her more, she slowly becomes... well, questionable. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing record, followed by death. Good luck. You also find out that she killed several scientists with toxins, in which resulted the scientists installing a morality core in her to stop her from fighting the entire center. GLaDOS has been described as a passive-aggressive, witty, narcissistic, and sinister. And that's all true. Oh, she also lied to me about cake. I mean, how crazy is that? Yeah, I'm a psycho. Sandra Cohen from Bioshock Out of all the insane people you meet in Bioshock, Sandra Cohen is perhaps the most well-known. Little is known about his past before Rapture, but following the descent of Rapture into chaos, he completely went mad. He becomes so impassive with death and the suffering of others that he actually sees death as a form of life and surrounds his level with reminders of that fact. When you first meet him, he forces himself on your radio and becomes your ally. A very unwanted ally, but hey, it's Rapture, you don't really have much of a choice. What he wants is for you to kill four people and then place those deaths on the wall. And not only that, he's crazy enough to even give you rewards for helping him. But uh, whatever you do, just don't say anything about his art or give it a strange look. Uh, what's that look? You don't like it, do you? I don't need to be judged by you, by anyone! Screw you! Screw all you fucking doubters! Santa Cohen is crazy. He only cares about his art, and he has a small grip of reality. It's hard to tell whether or not he's being helpful to you, or whether he's going to snap at you. And yet, an interesting way of teaching piano. Oh God, you sick fuck! Let me out of there! Yeah, I'm a psycho. Psycho. I'm a psycho. The number one psycho. video game psycho is Kefka, Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> LET THE PARTY BEGIN! You know, out of all the other cycles on this list, there was a sense of decency within them. A sense of humanity, regardless of who they are and what they did. Kefka is beyond that. He is crazy in every single way, even dressing so far as a clown. Which does help, but that's beside the point. While previous villains in Final Fantasy series have been distant, cold, ruthless, and bent on their goals, Kefka is the opposite. He is loud, short-tempered, flamboyant, destructive, and cruel. He is a psychopath with no regard of human life or remorse for any atrocities that he committed, and he finds the only amusement in the suffering of others. He cracks dark jokes, breaks into hysterical laughter upon causing mayhem, and hates everything in the world. In fact, the only thing that causes Kefka joy? Destruction, death, and chaos whenever he can. In terms of insanity in this mad, mad world, Kefka is considered to be the number one video game psycho of all time. And for good reasons. Destroy! 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 Let's destroy everything! <sighs> I am the in my head, take out